Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson. I am the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps, and today we are going to be making a maple blueberry oat soap in an ombre pattern. Ombres certainly aren't new to the soap community. As I said in my previous soap video, basically there are no new designs under the sun. Everybody's already done it at least once. But soap designs, similar to hairstyles and makeup styles, ebb in and out of fashion. The ombre soap design was biggest in the soap community to my recollection about two or three years ago, but I didn't do it then, so I'm doing it now. This soap will be available to purchase on November 2nd at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time if you're interested, and if not, hey, thanks for watching me make it all the same. Also, we do have Instagrams. Kenny has an Instagram for all of his self. Um, I have an Instagram for me and my kids and all the October marvelous fall stuff, and Royalty Soaps has an Instagram. Sometimes you guys get to find out over on Instagram what the video for the day is because I let y'all pick the thumbnail, so there's some... There's some perks to being an Instagram follower. All right, let's make some soap. First thing we ought to do, of course, is pour our lye water solution down our blender. The recipe I'm using today can be found in the description box below and cannot currently be purchased anywhere. So you gotta mix it up yourself. Now, because this is a maple blueberry oat soap, we're going to put the maple part on the bottom. So this is gonna be colored brown. I'm gonna put in some brown oxide from TKB, which is not really necessary because the fragrance oil we are using, which is blueberry muffin from Nature's Garden, discolors to almost black but I want it stabilized, which is why I go ahead and add the color anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up with my stick blender. I know y'all are looking at that and going, Katie, that's not black. Just you wait, Henry Higgins, because it's gonna be black in 24 hours. All right, so let's go ahead and pour this into our two Brambleberry molds after this quick commercial break. It's getting thick, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted. In fact, I blended it a little longer so it would hurry up because I'm impatient, as y'all know. So I poured in some of it. Now I'm gonna take these blue soap cubes and I'm gonna place those in. I've broken them up so there would be some on each side and in equivalent amounts. I don't know what it is. I've just been really liking the soap cubes recently. It's a good way to add some color into a layer that would otherwise just be solid, especially if the layer is gonna be discolored like this brown one is. It's gonna go almost black and there's no way to avoid that because of the fragrance oil. So add some fun colored soap cubes that don't use the same fragrance oil. Okay, gonna go ahead and add a little more brown on top. It's setting up, but not very much. Got these final bits of soap going in on top and they are gonna be exposed for the next layer, which is the one we're doing the ombre effect on. Now I should mention there's a couple of different ways you can do ombre. And I think the one that's the most seamless is going to be using the Brambleberry Lab colors. They do a really, really beautiful job at creating that effect and kind of bleeding into the next layer without you seeing Seeing, you know, like individual layers very much. That's, that's the best way to do it. Another good way to do it would be to use a really, really, really slow moving recipe and just do a million bazillion layers and lighten them by like one or two teaspoons of TD. But mine, I wanted to be a little more chunky anyway. So I'm gonna do the third option and we'll get started on that right now um, as we mix up those colors. Now we're going to mix up the two blues. We're gonna mix up the lightest blue and the darkest blue. And this is what you have to do. You have to pick the lightest shade that you want and the darkest shade, and you split your batch in half. So you can see here, this shade is barely not white. It's just like a few little steps up from white, but this shade is really blue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pour the lightest shade. I'm not gonna pour all of it. I'm just pouring a layer. We might not even cover all the tops of those blue soap cubes. Just gonna pour this across the top. 
come back, pour it across on this side as well. Okay, now we're gonna come in and we're gonna pour a little bit of the dark blue into the light blue. And that, you see, will darken up the light blue by a couple of shades. Now you can go as slow or as fast at as much or as little as you like. Like I said, I want some chunkier layers in mine. So I'm gonna continue to add quite a bit of the blue each time. And I want this to look very dessert-like. So I'm just going to pour on top like so. It'll probably puncture that first layer. To me, it really doesn't matter. If that matters to you, then you'll probably want to pick a fragrance oil that thickens faster than the one that I have chosen. We're probably gonna pour, I'd say five or six times. Okay, I'm gonna keep mixing up these layers off of the camera because it is starting to move, not super fast, just enough for me to wanna hurry and not have to worry about <laughs> moving my molds back and forth in front of the camera. Okay, let me go add a little more blue. This is one of those things where it changes per batch. It really does because I could be extremely precise, but part of the beauty of it, I think, is the variance in all the batches. So the one that I make today will look a little different than the one I make tomorrow and the one we make the next day and so on and so forth, but it'll all end up around the same place. You just might have slightly darker or lighter layers and that makes it cool. I will say you do wanna make sure that when you add the next bit of soap into your batch, that you make sure that it's blended completely in before you pour the next bit. That's just to help it look a little more uniform. The fragrance oil I added into the top of my batch here, this blue layer that I'm pouring over and over and over again, is Fresh Picked Blueberry from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I have used this fragrance oil for years. It's been very consistent for me. It hasn't changed hardly at all, and it always produces such stunning results in a soap that requires a little more time and is a little more complicated. I am mounding this up a little bit too because I have a little bit of extra soap left because those soap cubes displaced it and both Kenny and I forgot to uh, discount my oil amount. <laughs> okay, so I have put in as much as I can. Now it's time to move on to the soap frosting. Okay, so we've got our frosting bag filled up with some ultramarine blue on the sides, and then the soap batter is very, very lightly colored with titanium dioxide. I know it looked really white, but it's really more of like a creamy tan color. And then we've got apricot seed powder in there as well. And honestly, it makes it look like whole wheat pancake batter. So we're gonna do the three, two, one method here. Yeah, it actually really, really does look like pancake batter. It's kind of crazy, which is great because it is sort of a foodie soap. Not too much though, because the fragrance oil is fresh picked blueberry from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So that's more of a like, well, a fresh picked blueberry, <laughs> not one that's been baked into goods. But on the bottom layer, that's the one that smells really, really foody. So I think it's gonna be a really great one for autumn. And it's been a long time since I used a blueberry. I think it's been at least a year and a half. So I'm glad to go ahead and do that. So one of the things that Shelly, actually, my sister Shelly told me that I should talk about on camera is my scary good hearing. <laughs> She was like, you have to tell them about that time that we were playing hide and seek. So I guess I'll, I'll tattle on myself a little bit. We didn't know that I was so good at hearing and it's only hearing certain things because let me tell you, every time my mom would call me to do chores, never heard her, never heard her once. <laughs> but we were playing hide and seek and I found my sister Shelly in her hiding spot because I heard her breathing <laughs> and she was like, you have cheated. You didn't see me, you didn't find me, you just heard me. And I was like, I think that still counts. But then it got even worse because then they'd hold their breath when I walked by and I could just sense they were there. <laughs> So after that, it just wasn't fun to play that game with me anymore. But Kenny and I were just talking about how there's some people, like that's that's one extreme, but the other extreme are the people who never know they're being looked at 
ever, like ever. Caleb is one of those people. I could stare at him for like any amount of time and he wouldn't even know that I was looking his way. It's bizarre to me. Because most people, they can feel you staring at them. Not Caleb. Can you distinguish the blueberries from my blue gloves? <laughs> They're the exact same color. Every soap is going to get three blueberries. So another topic that was either suggested by somebody or one of my siblings told me to do it, I don't actually remember, was to talk about my grape, my gra <laughs> <laughs> My pet grape, my pet grape Larry who died. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Was to talk about my great grandparents. So I have four sets of grandparents and I'll talk about my dad's side. In my family, we like to tell stories and this is on both sides of my family, both my mom's side and my dad's side. Everyone likes to tell stories and so many, many, many stories have been passed down. That's just something that we've enjoyed doing. So even though I've never met either set of grandparents, I actually know quite a bit about them. So my papa, my great grandfather on my dad's side, apparently used to feed the birds out of the palm of his hand. He would go outside in the mornings and call them and just feed them bird seed and other little bits of like biscuit and stuff that my grandma had made. And they just fly into his hand. And I didn't know about this until I think I was a teenager and it blew my mind. I didn't know that that was something that happened outside of storybooks and movies. My grandma worked for their local church and did lots of charity things, including going to the local school and taking lunch to the kids up there. They were the only ones with a car in the town. So my grandma would get in the car, she'd go get food. And y'all have to remember, this is during the Great Depression. So food was scarce and there were a lot of very, very poor kids going to those schools that just didn't have lunch. Their families didn't, couldn't afford it. And she would go and collect any little bit that people could give. And then she would supplement. And I believe the local churches would supplement as well. And it was such a different time back then. It's so crazy because the sense of community and the way that small towns worked was just very, very different. They were in Arkansas, by the way. A good bit of my dad's family are from Arkansas. And then his parents relocated to Texas. I'm just gonna put this last little blueberry on top. Hooray! Okay, so now we can put the oats on. I have some old fashioned oats here. I would caution anyone not to use quick oats in their soap because it will actually get cooked. <laughs> <laughs> so use the big ones. I'm gonna make sure that every bar gets some and I'm putting this on before I put the syrup drizzle because I want that syrup drizzle of melt and pour to lock it all in. Ah, now I'm starving. I know, I know it is past 1230 and Kenny hasn't eaten since like 5 a.m. and I haven't eaten since like six. So we're very, very hungry. It's a testament to the quality of the design. That's right. <laughs> the only part of putting these sprinkles on top that I just can't stand is the mess. They get everywhere. They get on the molds and on the table. And the first thing I do whenever the camera gets turned off is wipe it all up. I have an alternate name for this, Kenny. Huckleberry Harvest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. That was, um, I think that's a fragrance oil, but um, I always thought that name just sounded corny for some reason. Like, Hey, come on down to the huckleberry harvest. <laughs> <laughs> Off to the side, I have a little bit of melt and pour that I have very strategically colored brown. You don't want it too brown, but you don't want it too orange, and you definitely don't want it too dark or too clear or too opaque because that won't look like syrup. And I am putting a generous amount of this on top. So lovely. I would talk more, but I'm really focusing on how hungry I am. <laughs> Sorry, I'm super laser focused on myself right now. <laughs> yeah. Last few droplets here. Mmm, yes, we are done. I'm all gonna eat this soap if you don't get it out of here right now. Yikes! 
Tell your children not to take a bite. <laughs> so we're gonna wait 18 to 24 hours, meaning anywhere between 18 and 24 hours. Somebody asked me about that the other day. Then we'll cut it up. We'll take a peep at the inside. We'll ask the question of the day after this quick commercial break. You guys, I am so excited to show you the very choppy ombre that we did. Once again, if you want to make an ombre that's a little more seamless, you just do more pores and you add less of the dark into the light or vice versa. But I wanted it to be a very obvious gradient. That's just the style I was going for today. Maybe in the future I'll do something a little more mundane. We'll see how I'm feeling. So whenever you cut soaps with oatmeal or any sort of a rough botanical. I'm struggling. <laughs> My voice is shaking. You have to go really slow. That's all. Just go really slow. Okay, let's pull one of the middle pieces out. This is what it looks like on the inside. So you can see we've got the lightest blue and the darkest blue, and then it just kind of fades on up in between. And then of course we have that marvelous blueberry maple oat top. I think it smells so good. So here's the concept art that I drew, and here is the soap itself. So there was kind of that white layer right in between here. It's hard. I can't exactly draw exactly what I want <laughs> with my crayon. But I, I think I think I got the point across. <laughs> okay, the question of the day is which one is better? Blueberry muffins or blueberry pie? I know my best friend Caroline would say pie. She's obsessed with pie. That's what she's having at her wedding is pie <laughs> instead of cake. What do you think, Kenny? Blueberry muffins or blueberry pie? Oh, blueberry muffins a hundred percent. Don't don't be playing these silly pie games. Oh really? I like blueberries and blueberry smoothies and anything blueberry flavored can can. I actually think I might have to go with the pie on this one just because I like pie so much, but I'm I'm kind of equally torn. I might be sitting in the in the I don't know which side to pick category. So to vote on the question of the day, all you have to do is click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Cast your vote. Blueberry muffins or blueberry pie? Thanks you guys so much for watching today's video. How did you like that ombre pattern? Pretty fun, right? Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that's going out and trying a new pancake flavor. I'm just now remembering this. There is a book called Poppleton and in there there's a lion's club and they're real lions and he's a pig and they make pancakes like blueberry and banana and maple and he goes with his friend Cherry Sue and she doesn't order any of the pancake flavors they have available. She just wants a plain pancake and what ensues is hilarious. So if you haven't read that easy reader and you're 25 and looking for something to do you should go read it. Maybe you want to try a different type of oatmeal. Here's something really nasty. You know those maple and brown sugar packs of oatmeal that we have? I used to dump those in bowls and just put water on them and eat them just like that. In fact, I still kind of do that, but don't tell anybody because it's, it's, it's a little embarrassing. I don't care what you do with your food. Just do something that makes you happy. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday we have a Japanese food inspired soap. So if you like that sort of a thing, you're gonna wanna see us back here then. Bye for now. Yeah.